Hello. Have we got everybody seeing it again? Give me a give me a heads up if you can see what's going on. Anything yet? Oh, hi, Sandy's here, that's good. Well, oh, and Caroline, good, good. I'll wait for a moment until, uh... oh, Sandy, hello, Sandy. Um, wait for Judy to get through, she's been having a bit of a problem. Lisa, hello. Nice to see you all again. It's all clear here, good. Right, how, how are you all? How's everybody been? Well, I hope. So. And Lenny. Hello, Lenny. Um, I've had some feedback about my, my studio here. Uh, apparently it's been, it's been a bit dark and the microphone hasn't worked well. So I've got a, a new microphone now. All very snazzy. You can't see that, so I'll pull it off. And we've got some extra lighting going on. So hopefully that's a little bit clearer for you all. So just to clarify, these videos are for educational purposes only and in no way constitute medical advice or treatment, so please see your qualified healthcare provider for individualised care. I've got to put that disclaimer out there. So last week a few people asked about how um, menopausal symptoms affected sleep and I thought this was a, an ideal topic to cover this week as a, as a whole about menopause. Uh, and not just for you ladies who are obviously going through it, but also your partners. Uh, for us we can often feel a, a little helpless at this time, seeing our loved ones seemingly change sort of right before our eyes. from. That person we've known and loved to potentially someone who is more emotional, more rational, less predictable. And this is extreme, and it's certainly not true of every situation. Um, but hopefully tonight we can discuss a few strategies for both partners whilst remembering that menopause is still a natural process. And like all other processes, it can be much easier if we support it appropriately. I couldn't find many references to menopause in popular co culture, apart from some tasteless jokes. So, if it gets warmed up, so to speak, how about a few tasteless song titles? Who sang these? Let's see if we can get on with those then. The heat is on. We've got anyone, the heat is on. How quickly can we get that one? I'll give you another one. Heat at the moment. No, we can't see any messages coming in there. Hot stuff. No. It's hot in here. And then I thought the a final one will be, I will survive. So there were Glenn Frey, Asia, Donna Sonna, Summer even, Nelly and obviously Gloria Gaynor. So, no Jackie, not Europe. <laughs> so, what do I know about menopause? Obviously I'm never going to go through it personally, but I will and I am supporting my wife through it and many of my patients. But I'm a lifelong student of anatomy and physiology, nature, science, the human spirit and view everything through the triad of health emotional chemical and structural aspects of health these are some of the things that patients have found useful over the years but as with everything really really is very individual and there's no magic bullet so some of these things might be helpful some not so but get the basics right i can't overemphasize that diet exercise and stress reduction if you if you have any other top tips by the way please feel free to put them in the comments and we'll we'll go through them at, at the end because they're you could have things that work for you, which is really helpful. Um, so yeah, diet, exercise and stress reduction. It's not going to be an exhaustive list, and there are some things that I do occasionally use for people that can be helpful, but I've left these out. So I was trying to focus on the things that give more bang for your buck, the things that are more likely to have the greatest impact. Uh, an important thing to mention is that don't always assume that hot flush flushes are menopausal. If you're a male, it probably isn't. If you're not in the right age bracket, it may not be. If you already have gone through the menopause and re-experienced symptoms, then that needs to be investigated. There are many other potentials, not just the menopause, that could account for your symptoms. So always get a medical opinion if you're unsure. The first thing to remember though, is absolutely everything we've talked about over the last four or five weeks, absolutely everything is highly relevant to menopausal symptoms. If you don't get those right, you, you're gonna have more chance of struggling. Two weeks ago, we mentioned about having a good gut microbiome critical. It helps break down to, to release um, estrogenic 
type substances from, um, from soya for a start. Uh, three weeks ago we talked about uh, good stress management and um, last week about uh, giving yourself a chance for quality sleep. And obviously I know it's one of the major issues with menopause but you still get everything else in order too and remember you have to schedule that time. And remember a few weeks ago we talked about how, uh, how we made hormones which was the fats which need to be emulsified and broken down by a bile from the gallbladder that we, then we need the good stomach acid to initiate it. All those things we've talked about in the last um, three, four weeks are a basic health bedrock and that we have to have right. Um, because that being said, the transition from perimenopause to menopause to postmenopause does bring up some unique challenges. Uh, and as always, the, the body it isn't split up into different sections. It's not the endocrine system, the hormone system, or the cardiovascular system. It just doesn't work like that. Literally everything is connected to everything else and anything can cause anything. The endocrine system affects the cardiovascular system, which affects the respiratory system, which reacts the cardiovascular system, etc, etc, etc. We're in a constant negative and positive feedback loops. But if we're not feeding and resting our body appropriately, then it cannot possibly function optimally. So bottom line is, always look after the basics. Get those right, and then let our body, which is millions of years of evolutionary fine-tuning, let that do the rest. However, menopause is slightly different, because it's a different stage in life. It's another transition, and evolutionary-wise, whatever happens to your genes post-childbearing years doesn't sort of matter as much, as you won't be passing those on to the next generation any longer. So there's no evolutionary pressure to survive for your, your gene-carrying capabilities. Um, and especially now, our lifespan is so much longer, which is why nature's maybe neglected this phase of a female's life to some degree. But, paradoxically, nature never neglects anything, as the answers can always be found in, in nature, in logic and in science. Somewhere along the line, Every single thing happens for a reason. So, quickly, what, what actually is the menopause? It's a stage in life where the women's menstrual cycle comes to an end as the ovaries age and release fewer hormones, the um, FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, and um, LH, luteinizing hormone. Uh, they can no longer perform their usual functions to regulate estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone, and the ovaries no longer release eggs for fertilization. So, therefore, you're no, 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 no longer able to get pregnant naturally. So this in itself could be quite stressful for some people, realising that that particular phase of life has come to an end, despite maybe being in their 40s or 50s. And, and it can be difficult for a partner to sometimes appreciate, because of their mind, but we don't want any more children, what's the problem? No, and, and that's not the point. It, it just means it's, it's the end of those childbearing years where many women and mothers feel most sort of empowered and their, their very womanhood is being removed from them. It isn't true for everyone by any means, but it is a common theme for many. So it is a natural part of ageing and usually occurs between 45 and 55 years of age as the estrogen levels decline. The average age in the UK is uh, 51, but about 1 in 100 experience menopause before the age of 40. Well, that's, that's a lot. Estrogen receptors are all over the body. They're in the eyes, in the gut, in the liver, in the muscles. So symptoms can be very widespread and not always initially attributable to menopause. But if you have receptors throughout the body which have been swamped with estrogen for years and now quite suddenly are not being stimulated, that can cause you symptoms. Common symptoms, as many of you know already, uh, include the hot flushes, night sweats, vaginal dryness, difficulty sleeping, low mood or anxiety, reduced libido, problems with memory and concentration. Hot flushes and night sweats are some of the most common symptoms that people experience and although it feels like your temperature is changing, it's actually a surge in adrenaline uh, which is coming from your um, fight or flight response, which we discussed previously. So from your, your um, adrenal glands, your uh, sympathetic nervous system reaction. We want to try and prevent such a surge. So we need to focus on keeping our parasympathetic nervous system strong. Remember that's the opposite of the sympathetic nervous system in the autonomic. So the thing you're going on behind the scenes. Uh, the parasympathetic's responsible for the rest, digest and heal and, and it's the brakes and the go 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 the sympathetic nervous system fight flight surge and it's that surge that, that gets you feel um hot and changes the, the, the flushes there so you can support that by regularly doing the hummingbird exercise which we spoke about by doing the cv4 exercise which we spoke about not over scheduling your day meditation stress management without doubt those who suffer more extreme menopause symptoms are, are those already sympathetic nervous system dominant they're already in that fight or flight they're already stressed Estrogen is actually is also a potent anti-inflammatory, so again, we, everything we discussed over the last four weeks is even more relevant here. If we're just about keeping up on top of your inflammation without the sport of estrogen, it's going to massively increase. Get that anti-inflammatory anti -inflammatory diet up and running beforehand if you can. It's never too early to start. 
we need to be supporting the, the triad of health, the emotional, the chemical and the structural elements to make our bodies robust and resilient on the inside and on the outside to reduce the peaks and the troughs of symptoms. And as we hear so often at the moment in relation to COVID, uh, we want to flatten the curve so we're not getting a big peak and a big trough. So, aerobic exercise, regular, four or five times a week for 20 to 40 minutes. Uh, the advice you about building an aerobic space, uh, an aerobic base is on the, uh, the website now. Um, so make sure to build that up first and then add your weight bearing exercise in to try and keep the bones nice and strong. The strength training, using weights, they don't have to be heavy to start with, but gradually increase the resistance to improve your strength. It not only helps with the musculoskeletal system functioning, but also helps with mental health and keeping weight stable. Osteopathically, one of the tools in our armamentarium is visceral osteopathy, which is looking at how the, the organs, mobility, motility, how they, how they move. So here we try and release tension in the tissues around the ovaries and try to encourage good expression through the liver, very much through the diaphragm. Using cranial treatment, we try and look at increasing the mobility of the cranial base, trying to encourage and maintain good parasympathetic response. And we do the CB4 procedure on you, that can be very helpful. Um, there's a technique called a pituitary drive, which is one of the the organisers of all the hormone system, um, that can be helpful. Um, the point is, we can still try and influence this uh, stage of transition through the structure, even if it is sort of indirectly. There are a couple of reflex points actually, uh, which can be quite useful. On top of the pubic bone at the front, um, just here, quite close, you feel the hard bony part, and the top of that, and when you get there, if it's sore, or feels like a, a, a pee, gently rub it out. And then at the back, the dimples of venus as they're called here they can sometimes be quite congested so you can give those a rub for 30 seconds to a minute and that can help the they're the chapman's reflexes that can help drain the uh, the whole ovarian area and give it a rub no i'm trying so diet is obviously massively important things which will regularly will cause a problem is a given alcohol nicotine caffeine they all directly negatively impact men the menopausal symptoms. Chocolate, unfortunately, sorry, chocolate's a biggie. Sugar and caffeine. Uh, it really is a, st a stressor for many people, but it's also the go-to comfort food. So beforehand, have snacks ready that can be healthy and nutritious, but also give you a sense of enjoyment, because you know, that's important. Uh, something, dry roasted uh, pecan nuts are fabulous, and one of my wonderful patients made us some a few years ago, and we were absolutely hooked, they're, they're so good. Um, they're very nutritious, easy to make. Um, I'll post up the recipe tomorrow, actually. Um, but it's something you can go to instead of reaching for the chocolate. Um, as we said before, out with the bad. Sugar, refined carbs, processed foods, alcohol, chocolate. Get rid of that lot. In with the good. More whole foods than naturally fermented foods. A plant-based diet is generally more anti-inflammatory. It isn't to say once you're perimenopause you have to go vegan. Just make sure the percentage of your plant-based foods increase and look after your gut microbiome, as we've discussed a few weeks ago. Everything we, uh, we spoke about last week in relation to sleep, get as many of those strategies in place. The advice sheet's on the website now as well, um, as is the video recording. Make sure you're getting your vitamin D. I mean, it's been okay this last week or so, but I think it's all due to change next week, sadly. And don't just say, oh, well, it didn't work for me. Have you really committed to making those changes? Really focus on changing one thing a week. Swap out one bad habit for a good one. It's not going to change overnight. Um, the imbalances in the stress response have been building up for, for years. Gradually build up your compendium of healthy habits so it doesn't feel like a big change. So it's something that's achievable. Change the simple things first and build up. Ideally you want these things in place prior to menopause so the transition will all be much smoother. Yeah, the genetic and environmental factors of course and that can adversely affect things. Uh, more people on the pill, taking HRT, more hormone in our water supply, lots of hormone in our food chains along with hormone disruptors. So meat ideally should be organic, grass fed, trying to eat seasonally and locally. We're constantly trying to fight it back against the onslaught of uh, modern so-called progress. So being as though this is a fairly unique stage of life, what else can we contribute naturally? Evidence is scarce for many of these things, significant and stringent studies are expensive, and herbs etc can't be patented, so the financial value is low, whereas the human value is huge. Uh, there are some things which, both in studies and anecdotally seem to have quite favourable outcomes. Um, but not to labour the point, which I'm going to, fix everything else first. That will give you a strong, stable platform to add these extras into. Otherwise, you're just papering over cracks in the wall, and at best, it'll be a short-term fix. So some early clinical evidence suggests that sage for hot flushes and night sweats works. Uh, 2011, the Swiss researchers discovered that sage 
reduced hot flushes by 50% in four weeks and by 64% within eight weeks. It also helped with mood swings in 47% uh, of people. Interesting, when it was first identified as something good for hot flushes, uh, the underside of the leaves in the morning have got little droplets of water on it. They actually look like they're sweating. Well, I thought that was interesting anyway. Um, a trial in Finland found that women taking uh, sea buckthorn oil every day for three months experienced less vaginal dryness, itchiness and burning and could also help atrophy. And it's probably because it's got a high fatty acid con content. Um, vitamin E probably has the most research in alternatives for menopausal symptoms. A uh, 2007 study published in uh, the Journal of Gynecologic and Obstetric Investigation reported that menopausal women taking 400 micrograms of vitamin E every day for four weeks experienced few hot flushes and those flushes were less severe. Some people have found that it could also relieve dry skin and vaginal dryness as well. Uh, good food sources are avocados, nuts and seeds and healthy plant oils. But if you're having symptoms, taking the supplement could well be helpful. It's a strong antioxidant and one of the firefighters of the body. Ginkgo biloba. It's long been known to help with memory and anxiety, but can also be helpful with low libido due to its effect on the, uh, the circulatory system. Uh, there was a study in 2014 uh, and it's found that women taking ginkgo every day for 30 days felt more desire compared to those taking placebo. So that's helpful. Valerian is well known to those with sleep issues and we briefly mentioned it last week. Um, but it too could be really helpful for hot flushes, probably due to its phytoestrogenic pro um, properties. So it sort of mimics estrogen. A recent study in 2018 by um, Hamadan University Medical Sciences found that women taking it twice a day for two months had less severe, less frequent hot flushes. Uh, but you shouldn't take it if you're taking tranquilizer, sleeping pills, strong pain meds, as it can exacerbate drowsiness. Soya and soy isoflavins, uh, not for women with breast cancer or other hormone sensitive cancers. Uh, it's somewhat controversial due to lots of soy being genetically modified and some people reacting adversely to it in terms of inflammation. But there's a lot of evidence that it helps with hot flushes and night sweats. It's also phytoestrogenic, um, so it mimics estrogen to a lesser level. And when soy is ingested, it's broken down in the gut by our own healthy bacteria into its active components. So again, look at the gut microbiome, kimchi, sauerkraut, kefir, kombucha, probiotics. Um, there was a study in 2015 a meta study, so a meta analysis checking you know, lots of different studies, and generally it was between 11.7 and 26% uh, reduction in hot flushes. But it takes at least three months to get in there. Black cohosh that's a common one, and it's received quite a lot of scientific attention for its possible effects. But the results seem to be sort of 50 50. It can be helpful for some people, but conversely, 50% of people found no benefit at all. Um, it was originally thought to be estrogenic in action, but actually now shows it, it isn't so there were some safety concerns about it but that's not the case now uh, there's also met some evidence that combine it with St John's Wort it can really help with mood swings related to menopause red clover was an interesting one because that's a really popular one lots of people use but in all the studies that I could find there was no consistent evidence we found that it, that it actually works um, but many people say it does so I think the thing there is <laughs> if it's something you want to try and it works for you great because it it, not everything shows up in studies as well, we know. Dong Kwai, that's been used in um, TCM, traditional Chinese medicine, for 1,200 years. Um, yet there's no solid studies supporting that. Uh, yet there's a lot of anecdotal evidence women taking it, uh, and they get great relief from it. But it shouldn't be taken with people with fibroids or blood, pl clotting, blood clotting problems, such as hemophilia, um, or if you're taking warfarin uh, or, or any other anticoagulant, because bleeding complications can result. Um, Panax ginseng, that can help with some... Uh, menopause symptoms such as uh, mood swings and sleep disturbances and also on the overall sense of well-being. Um, it's not particularly good for hot flushes but ginseng is one of the adaption herbs which uh, help to regulate if it's too high or too low function. I often suggest it for adrenal stress related issues um, which is one of the things that give you that adrenaline surge which we want to try and avoid. Evening primrose oil that's long promoted to relieve hot flushes but again the evidence for it is, is not so strong. Um, but uh, there's a lot more support for flaxseed oil um, helping with with hot flushes, so get those flax seeds into your diet. Wild yam, been used for a long time for a variety of conditions, um, but it's long been purported to help with menopausal symptoms because it contains a, a, a compound called diostogenin, which is another plant-based estrogen, and it was thought it could be converted into progesterone, um, but it doesn't. It doesn't, the body can't convert it, unfortunately, so there must be another modus operandum for those who swear by it. One of my favorite go-to herbs for menopausal symptoms is holy basil, uh, or Tulsi Supreme. And there seems to be quite a lot of research backing it up. It's uh, quite a potent adaptogen again, meaning it helps to balance the hormone system, whether it's running too high or too low. 
and it's particularly helpful with balancing adrenal function. It's anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, so it'll help to minimise that adrenal surge. Many people are, are iodine deficient in our society anyway. Um, so when it comes to estrogen, it essentially takes the brakes off the thyroid gland. Uh, and this can be highlighted even more. So if you don't have any allergy to, to iodine, a few drops of Lugol's solution a day can be really helpful. Um, doesn't taste great, but keeping your iodine levels up is so important. Weight gain is quite a common thing, but those who can achieve and maintain a healthy balance, um, healthy, uh, healthy weight, have a significant reduction in symptoms. Being overweight with a BMI of 30 will make these symptoms much worse. Diet, so we've mentioned this before, high calcium we need as well for bone health. Postmenopausal is really important um, due to potential of suffering from osteoporosis, which is also why the vitamin D is so important. So lots of fruit and veg, antioxidant rainbow foods, high phytoestrogen foods, soybeans, tofu, temper, flax seeds, linseeds, sesame seeds and beans, loads of water, keep flushing it all out, protein rich foods, zinc rich, rich foods, zinc's really important as well. So um, cashew nuts, almonds, chickpeas, kidney beans, shellfish, um, uh, B6 rich foods, uh, chickpeas, Again, there, tuna, not too much so because it can contain high levels of mercury, spinach, banana, potatoes, lean meat. Um, and as we said before, avoid the trigger foods alcohol, caffeine, sugary, and spicy foods, and chocolate. Don't skip your meals, keep your blood sugar stable. It's really important for that as well. Emma kindly pointed out last week about um, low TOG duvets, uh, they can be very helpful, available for Margos and MS. Other outlets may be available. So, what can your partner do to help? So when, when a woman's experienced their sort of mood swings and other challenges of menopause, the husbands and partners might not know how to support them. And many of us want to be there for a partner, um, but don't know how to be supportive. It's always, no matter what I do, it's wrong. So one thing to do is research menopause together so you both have a clear idea of what's going on and what could potentially happen. But try not to manifest a different reality. Oh goodness, here it says I might be forgetful. I must be being forgetful. No, not everyone has all the symptoms or any of the symptoms. So just, just be aware of it and then you know that it's a normal and understandable thing to be happening. Be patient with your partner and, and yourself, um, especially if mood swings occur or forgetfulness is an issue. Talk, because even if communication doesn't come naturally to you, if you tell her that you want to be helpful, then your menopausal partner will at least know you're on her side. If you've already got quite good communication skills, tell her that you can see that she's obviously going through it, this is a bit rough, and ask her, like, what, what can I do to help you to get you through this? It's all simple and effective. Trust, trust her. It can be a real top trying time, obviously. So if your wife or partner says she's doing the best she can, believe it. If she says she can't help it, she can't. Patience is vital in both the short and the long term. Cutting her some, some slack when she seems sad or angry will go a long way. And the message you're sending then is, you know, you're worth waiting for and this isn't going to last forever. And, you know, as the partner, try not to take it personally. It's not always easy if your partner gets upset, but don't turn her upset into your upset. She can be angry, sad, frustrated, and you can listen to her without making it about you. Doesn't mean to say you can't get angry, sad or frustrated, um, because that, that's also very legitimate but maybe not that particular moment. It goes back to that communication thing again. Help, help her. Any little thing or big thing that you can do to make her life a little bit easier to reduce the overall burden and that sense of being overwhelmed will massively reduce her stress limits, thus limit that adrenal surge which causes so many of those symptoms. Help her to get the sleep she needs. Looking after your own sleep schedule with everything we talked about last week, your healthy lifestyle choices will help make it easier on her to make those choices too. So make sure you schedule sufficient time to achieve optimal sleep, even if she can't get to sleep schedule that time. Support health. Getting started on an exercise plan is easier if like the two of you are going to do it together. Off to take walks, bike rides together, start yoga or pilates. Meal plan together. Encouraging each other to make healthy choices based on what we've talked about over the last few weeks. Again, if you're doing it together, it's so much easier. And sort of plan ahead. Uh, at appropriate time, talk about the situations that stress your relationship. So if you've seen a toxic person in your lives is a problem, talk about how to deal with it before that happens. Again, we're trying to minimise that whole stress reaction. And most importantly, keep a sense of humour for both people, because there are funny times as well. So not everyone will need heavy duty support through their pause. They will at least need a, maybe a bit of a boost from time to time. But your intentions are mean a lot, and just knowing that you, you want to support her, not blame or punish her, that will go a long way. Some women in menopause, though, this is really good, uh, they, they look forward to the transition, feel strong, happy and hopeful. 
and they also felt that their life experience had made them competent, wise and, and indispensable. And in many trial societies, these women are revered for their experience. Menopause women may feel as if they're sort of getting a second wind sometimes and free to live as they, they please. Uh, and sometimes when they're shackled of not having any children, they can't get pregnant, it's great, they can go and enjoy themselves. I don't mean to be promiscuous. Um, uh, if they're in good health through this period, they may also appreciate that, that they've weathered well over the years and you know, what a wonderful, wonderful way to be. So, I guess the biggest thing is, menopause is not an illness, it's a natural part of life. And um, I, th I like this, I like this little one from Billy Joel. She can kill with a smile, she can wound with her eyes, she can ruin your faith with her casual lies, and she only reveals what she wants you to see. She hides like a child, but she's always a woman to me. So, that's my bit, and now I can see we've got a million and one comments here, so I'm going to have a little, little check through there. Um, hello Sam McLee, and Linda, hello, and Blake, Cocker Hoop, <laughs> thank you Sam. Uh, hello pal from my darling daughter Ella, Hannah, we will be better seeing you, thank you. Uh, Jackie, Jackie's my sister, and she, she's one of the people last week who asked to... To, to do this for this week, and I thought it was a really good idea. And Fran, my wife's cousin, Andrew Petra again, hi. Julie Crunchy, um, hot chocolate, no, it was Nelly, uh, well, Lisa, Donna Summer, yeah, again, and there we go. Good. Trudy mentioned about the, the lighting in the microphone, so yeah, I'm glad that's worked, uh, Trudy, for the reading. Hot chocolate, can yeah, there we go. Oh, Emma, yeah, cool pillow from MS and very low tog, one tog duvet. Argus, Dunham, Dunham, MS, etc. Emma was the other one who asked about this, so that's fine. Sugar and alcohol seem to make it worse, Jackie? Yes, 100%, without a doubt. Uh, Doreen, hello, Doreen. Skin flared up, in particular, spotty cheeks, so embarrassing. Yeah, so again, it goes back to trying to get all the other bits sorted out. Get your basics right, and something that's one of the easy things to clear. So get that gut biome, microbiome sorted. That's the, the main thing for that. Um, truly, I know my menopause was uh, chemo induced. Yeah. Yeah, starflower oil again. Those fatty acids. One of those things that are really, really important. Starflower oil, some um, linseeds, um, possibly evening primrose oil. Um, last evening. <laughs> yeah, Lisa, you can get you can get starflower oil quite easily. Um, borage oil. And, and try and get lots of nuts and seeds because you'll get loads of the oils in there and that's really really important. Um, Tulsi, uh, yeah, Beverly, um, Tulsi, love it, yeah, Tulsi is such a great, holy basil, such a great, great herb. Uh, how about cacao alternatives to replace the chocolate? Lots of zinc and magnesia, easy to cut with too. Yeah, love that idea, Sandy, Sandy plan, yeah, absolutely. Really good idea. You can, again, when you're making little snack things, there's loads of um, got protein balls you can make with the, the raw cacao stuff. So, um, so I can tell my husband to stop calling me a homicidal maniac now. <laughs> yes, Beverly, absolutely. Um, hi, what would be the first signs of perimenopause? Oh, great question, Tammy. Yeah. So perimenopause itself can last between sort of one and three years. It can potentially last longer than that. So the signs are is. Jackie's actually just put there, irregular periods, that's the start. Sometimes they can be, come a little bit closer together, sometimes further apart. Um, it's, it's a change in your normal cycle. It's not an absolute one step to another because one month things may be slightly different and then, oh, I'm back to normal again. And then, oh, things are going, it's, it's over a period of time. It's a gradual, it's a gradual change and, until over that sort of generally one to three years until the periods completely stop. Um, I say one to three years, a lot of people, it is longer than that, but generally that's because all the other things aren't in place. So if, you're, if your um, gut and your um, uh, stress levels are working better, then it'll be a sh much shorter, uh, shorter transition from peri to menopause, um, to full-on full menopause. Full-on menopause is um, classed as a year after the, the, your last menstrual period. I um, hope that answers that question. Um, any other questions coming up into there? No, I think that's got everything. <laughs> Emma, I'm in my sixth year of symptoms. I blame my osteopath for keeping my hormone system on track. <laughs> yeah, Emma, you know that word stress we mentioned? <laughs> right. Uh, Lisa, I uh, feel 
but even though I choose not to have children many years ago, the fact that the next phase of my life will prevent my choice, it's kind of a strange choice that will be gone, and how much your body visually changes, it's like a smack in the face of now you're getting old. Yeah, Lisa, that's what we mentioned earlier, that, you know, it, your, your capability of um, having children has changed, and it is a, it's a massive thing to get over, and like, so sometimes the partner's like, well, you don't want any more children, what's the problem? It's not about that at all, so that's valid. Does um, discoveries affect the signs and symptoms? Yeah, Caroline, because obviously um, PCOS itself, you're already not particularly a regular cycle in that way. Um, Margaret, I, I had periods of ex, extra heavy prior to. Yeah, again, it's, it can be any change. It can go to, to nothing, it can be really heavy, it could become shorter or longer. Uh, eventually it will become longer. Linda, sorry, I shouldn't laugh. I just read your thing. I thought you said my only symptom was fornication. <laughs> okay. Formication, that's fine. Uh, sage help, yeah, sage is a good one. And um, hello, Alex. Yeah, we're just finishing off, but I'm sure you can catch up on this uh, later uh, later tomorrow. I'll, uh, I'll put it up onto the website. So, lovely to see you all again. Next week, I thought, actually... We'll do something a little bit more structural. I think just arthritis, arthritis in general. I think it could be quite a good good trick. There's lots of strategies you can use for um, <laughs> uh, nutritionally and for um, exercises uh, and obviously our emotional well-being with it as well because it's the word arthritis is quite an emotional uh, trigger. So yeah, next week we'll have a look at arthritis. Lovely. Thanks all for for tuning again. And it really is a lovely to see you all virtually. Uh, just a lot of questions there. And is there a test to check as they don't have periods due to spill? They generally don't do the blood test so much now, and if you're anyway, probably not. And is it going to help? Not really. Um, good. Lovely, everybody. Have a great week. Keep well in lockdown. And um, make, a, make a pledge to change one good habit. Oh take one bad habit over this next week and let's see how we do take care bye